Hey, this is Ryan from Web Eminence, and in this video, I'm gonna do a review of the Event Espresso plugin for WordPress. Event Espresso is a plugin for WordPress that you can use to display events on your website, take registrations and payments. It does a lot more, so I actually just used it recently on two different websites simultaneously, so I have a good feel for it right now, so I thought it would be a good time to do a review video and show you uh, how it works, and then you can see if it's gonna work for your website. So you can get more information about this plugin at eventespresso.com, including the features, which I'll go over briefly in this video. So they have a list of all the features that are included. And then the pricing, which uh, the two websites I'm gonna show you where we set up this plugin, they both purchase the $80 personal support license, which covers one website with all the basic features. And there's a bunch of add-ons that you can purchase so if we go back to the home page and go to add-ons, there are several different add-ons like the event calendar, which I did purchase for one client. So I'll show you what that looks like. Some different views available. There's like a MailChimp integration you could purchase. So that would put all your event registrants right into your MailChimp account. There's other payment gateways available as an add-on as well. Some payment gateways are included and I'll show you which those are. So once you purchase from their website, you will get a license and the software. So you can download the free version. I think they call it decaf uh, through the plugin directory in WordPress. So you can at least try it out, but then you will need to pay for the um, full version and then install it after downloading the software from their website. After you install the plugin, you'll see this new event espresso menu within WordPress. And this is what I'll go over here. You'll probably spend most of your time in events, registrations, and transactions. So if we click on events, you see in this website, we already have a bunch of events added. Basically, what this plugin does is it, after you create an event, it creates an event page that looks something like this. So this is a page on the website, and it's slash events, and then slash whatever the URL for that event is and then it creates this section here. So it has the title and all the details with pricing here. You can click show details to show more details. And then someone can select a quantity for a ticket or a registration and then click register now. There are a few other details down here like a calendar, um, time and um, day. And then there's a venue which you can customize as well. Some of these details you can turn off and turn on. Uh, I'll show you how you do that in the plugin. But if I were to click register now, it would take me to the registration page where I can put in my name and email address and then go to the payment options. So I'll show you what that looks like. One thing I will point out is this plugin does have some um, aesthetic issues in my opinion like for example there's this paragraph here that has no space in between the next heading so it's a little messy um, you can fix some of this using CSS on your website if you know how to do that I've done some of that just to add spacing here and to remove some of these uh, titles that aren't necessary for example details I probably don't need that here I can just hide that and then I could add some padding above this and those might be um, small things to some people but I think it's worth it just to make it look a little bit nicer so after you click proceed to payment options it's gonna take them to a checkout page again it says the price and then on this site we're using PayPal so someone can uh, go to PayPal to finish the uh, payment or they can select cash here and it will actually create an invoice and they can pay uh, in person at the time of the event. So that's basically how it looks on a website. We did purchase the event calendar plugin on this website so that we could create this look here. So what it does is it puts all your events on a calendar view. If you scroll over one, it shows some details. And if you click on one, it goes right to that event page so that you can go ahead and register. So that's a pretty nice feature that uh, cost $80 for that add-on. Uh, I think it's worthwhile for some people if you have a lot of events and you want to show them in a calendar view. 
And here's another site where I'm using Event Espresso. And just to show you an example, I did add some padding above this title and I removed that details um, title or heading that I didn't think was necessary. So it just cleans it up a little bit. And again, you would have to use CSS code to make those changes or get into the plugin code and make the edits there. So both of those would take a little bit of expertise in uh, website coding. So that's the front end of the website. Let me show you a few sections in the back end. So let me show you one event just so you can take a look at what that looks like because that's where you'll be spending a lot of your time. So this is an event. Uh, here's the title in the URL. I can add a description here and then you need to add tickets and date times. So this does get a little confusing depending on how many events you have or the timing of them, but most people should be able to figure out how to get this to work. Um, if you have multiple times for a single type of event, you could add them all here. Um, but I think for this website, we're just going to be creating multiple events that might be easier for some people. So this is the name of the event and then the start and end time, which is important because that'll show up on that visual calendar add on if you're using that. Uh, the limit is the number that of tickets that can be sold for this event and then below that are the available ticket types so in this case we have um, just the pricing which is 115 dollars uh, and this probably should be one here because it's basically admitting one person per ticket so i'm going to change that to one and then this second one is just an additional 41 dollars to purchase a manual so this is good for options. You can give that option and people can choose that when they check out. So let me show you what that looks like on the event page. And I showed you this before, but someone could just add a quantity of one for the ticket. And you can see this drop down only goes up to three because we had said we're only allowing three people at this event. So you can set this to whatever you want. And then someone could add one of the manuals for $41 and then it would add these two together when they go to register. And just to show you another way that you could use these ticket options, this is another client where we're setting up Event Espresso and they're doing a single registration deposit and a single registration full payment. So someone could choose to pay $500 or pay the full amount. And let me show you what that looks like on their website. Here's the event. And they could choose both, I suppose, but um, they wouldn't want to do that. They would want to select one or the other and then click register. So you can use the tickets to have different payment options or levels. So going back to the original site, down here is where you can choose the venue and you can add new venues. Just a title, description, and then we can add the address which uh, will, could display a Google map as well. So it's pretty basic and not everyone needs to use venues, but if you have a lot of venues, it's a good way to kind of manage them and then you don't have to type out the information every time. You just got to create it once and then select the menu or the venue down here. There's an excerpt, which is standard in WordPress, but this actually gets used on the calendar. So I have been filling that out on this website. There's some options up on the right, like event registration options. We're doing 10 for the total uh, number of tickets allowed for that event. There's categories, just like a WordPress post. And we could change the questions that are asked to a registrant. Right now we're just using name and email, but you could change that here. And there are some templates for this as well. So if I click on this link here, it's going to take me to another page uh, for the registration form questions. So we have first name, last name, and email address. Those are the ones I'm using. And then there's some other basic questions like address, city, country, state, phone number that you can add. You can create question groups. And then there's some form settings in this section. So all this is found under management and registration form. So there's some form settings you can edit here. We've just been using the standard setup for these registration forms, but um, some people would like to know that you can also request other information on the forms. There's probably some add-ons available if these basic questions aren't going to be enough for you. And you can also just click add new question to add just a custom question and they can be text, check boxes, drop down, date pickers, all kinds of stuff. So you should have, most people should have all the options they need with this uh, default level.
So if we go back to the events page, just want to show you these other tabs real quick. There's categories of events. There's templates for events. So I can change the template for how a single event page looks. Like I can reorder these sections here and I did do that on this website. And this is an event list page. Uh, shows me the URL and I could change some of the settings for that page as well. Here's what that page looks like. It's just kind of a blog kind of look, standard in WordPress. You could add a featured image, which would be featured here, but I didn't find this to be real useful, so I'm not using that, but some people might find it useful. So then we go back up to the top, click default settings. There's a few other defaults, like the default maximum tickets allowed, 10, and default registration status. So if we go down to the main menu again for Event Espresso, you can then click on the list of registrations. So as you're approaching your event, this is obviously going to be useful to figure out who's registered and what their status is. You can probably export this to, um, you know, take it with you. So here's a CSV file, so you can export a spreadsheet. You can get invoices in here. You can resend the registration details by email. So lots of useful stuff in here. In this section, there's an event check-in tab, which we're not using but uh, you could use this to check in people. So you could do this manually on your website, like check somebody in. You could probably use barcode. I th think that's an add-on. Here's a contact list and then reports. And that's all within the registration section. So if we go to the management section, first let's look at transactions. That's just gonna show payment and overview and reports for your payments that have come through. In messages, these are just the emails that have gone out. Um, so you can manage the templates there and change some settings for how emails are handled. So like when someone registers, an email will go out to them and it'll go out to you as the admin for the website. Uh, under pricing, you can set some default pricing here and tax settings. Here's registration form, which I already showed you. And then payment methods is important uh, because this is how people are gonna pay. These are the defaults that are available in the um, $80 single license. So they have authorized.net. You could do bank uh, payment method. This is an offline method it looks like. So people would just be paying by giving their bank information, which probably isn't very popular. Method of payment, you could have to do payment by check. You can do cash at class, which I showed you on the event form. Um, you can use, I'm not even sure what this is. You can use Majira, which I think is a payment gateway, maybe outside the US, I've not heard of, heard of it very often, and then PayPal Express and PayPal Pro. So I'm using PayPal for my clients. I think another popular option would be Stripe. And if you wanted to use Stripe, you would have to get the um, Stripe payment add-on, which is $75. So I think most of the other payment methods are gonna be 75 bucks to add on. So once you set your payment options, those will show up in the registration checkout form. Once they get to this step, they'll click proceed to payment options and then they'll see the payment options and be able to choose one of them. The help and support for the plugin is pretty good. You can see that tour was showing up and I had to close it a few times. So there is a lot of help available. You can search for help. You can look at frequently asked questions. And a lot of the items throughout the plugin have uh, little question icons like this and you can click on them and it'll jump you to that section in the help documents so that's pretty helpful and overall the plugin is not pretty and the front end is not you know the interface doesn't look great but it's very functional it has a lot of settings you'll have to go through but most people should be able to use the basic settings to you know take registrations for events and get payments for events as well if you're interested in seeing some of my other favorite plugins for WordPress that I use on almost every website, you can check out this video here where I go over my top go-to plugins. If you have any questions about Event Espresso, feel free to comment below, or if you have experience with it and you wanna share your experience, comment as well. And then make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos on WordPress plugins and a lot of other topics. So we'll see you on the next video.